Hey guys, uh, Fuzzy Knopf here, and uh, now we're going to get started with the first tutorial series in this uh, set of making software go backwards. And uh, we're going to be using Ida Pro a lot, so I figured to start off, we should just kind of like get comfortable with Ida Pro. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the labs from the Practical Mauer Analysis book, and I'm just going to use um, Chapter 6, Lab 4. So it's Lab 0604, this one right here. Okay, so in Yes, Color Scheme, other video talks about that, I'm pretty sure. So if you uh, are thinking like, man, that color scheme is awesome, I want that, like, check out that video. So, let's talk about navigating in IDA, moving around in IDA, okay? A couple, uh, couple different things we want to talk about. One, um, spacebar. Pressing the spacebar takes you from this graph mode to this text mode you are going to probably be most comfortable in this here graph mode. Uh, that's because things like jumps and calls and different pieces of code blocks get broken up into different sections. And what ends up happening is you can kind of logically see different items. And uh, uh, by clicking on the background and dragging it, you can move around, okay? Now, that is not the only way to move around. You can use the arrow keys to move around. Um, one thing that I like to do, I'm going to share with you, is the W key on your keyboard will fit the entire graph to your window. And now you have, uh, if you see this right here, this graph here, you can kind of see there, but I think it's a lot easier to see it like this. Uh, you can see the whole graph and you can kind of recognize some things. You know? So like we can recognize a loop here and we can recognize these decision branches here. So these, um, the ability to see the whole graph at once will kind of like let us know where we want to zoom in on, right? And if we want to zoom back in, we can click on a, a code block here. And you see it highlights that code block. And if you press the one key, Ida will try and put that piece of code on the screen. It doesn't always work. So you might need to like zoom out with W and like hit one again. But I find this a, a pretty effective way of like moving around with Ida and getting a good feel for what I'm looking at, okay? So, second thing, we, we know how to move the graph around, we know how to zoom out with W and zoom back in with 1, okay? Next thing is, I have calls highlighted. If you don't, I really recommend picking up that script. I know I've mentioned it in a couple other videos, so I'm not going to spend any time on it. But uh, if we see a call to some function here, and we want to go inside that function, double-clicking on that function brings us to the graph view of that function. If we're in text view like that, it's going to jump us to that part in the code. Let's stick for graph in graph view for now. So we can see other calls and we can double click and follow them through now. And we're two calls deep and we're in some big function, right? And uh, pro tip, this is printf, okay? If you see this shape, probably printf, okay? Not gonna say all the time for sure, but uh, this shape right here, printf, and you just kind of pick that up over time. Um, you'll spend a couple times looking at it and hating your life, but just uh, kind of memorize that, right? <laughs> tip. So we're, we're now somewhere deep inside printf and we're like, oh my god, my life is miserable. What are we, what are we looking at here? And we want to go back. That's our escape key, right? Now escape key isn't like a, you know, folder above type of key. It's a back button type of key. So it takes us to wherever we were. It doesn't always take us to the parent function. We have our history of where we've moved around in Ida, which we can browse back through with the escape key. But say we're in this function here and we're curious as to what are the different ways we can get to this function. And to do that, we can highlight the function. We can press Control and X. And what that's gonna pull up is a window called xrefs2. And what that means is cross-reference2. Places in the code that point to this piece of code. And you can see there's gonna be more than one, right? So. Which one we were at, I don't know. That's what escape keys for, getting back to where we were, right? But say like, oh, you know, this one is interesting for some reason, and we're gonna check that. And, you know, like, oh, he, the same function here, and it also gets called. And if you'd like, if you're wondering, what is this? Basically, it's a wrapper for the printf function, and it gets called, and you can see like, uh, text is being pushed into this, and then like, this wrapper function gets called, it sets some things up, calls the actual printf function, which is this ugly piece of crap here, 
accessing escape gets us back out of that. That's what that is. But that's not what we're talking about this time. We're talking about how to move around an item, right? Key concepts here, you know? Looking at the graph, moving around the graph, calling in, calling back out, or diving in and like tracing our steps back out. If we trace our steps back out, say one step too far, and we wanna go back forward, the control and enter will take us forward. So escape to go backwards, control and enter to go forwards, just like in your browser, back and forward. Double clicking on a function dives into that function. So one last thing, to, or two last things to wrap up this video. And the first is that, actually it's gonna be three, sorry. The first is these virtual addresses here. If you don't see them, we can display them by going to options, general, line prefixes under disassembly, disassemble, uh, display disassembly line parts, line prefixes are these memory addresses, okay? If we know that, you know, we've made some note like, hey, something interesting at this memory address, we can press the G key to bring up the jump to address and excluding any leading zeros, we don't need to type them. We can type in, you know, some 401C, right? And that takes us to where we just were. But say we're not here, right? We can hit G, 401.01c, and here we are, 401.01c, made it, right? So that's jumping to these things, and that's how to display line prefixes. One last thing, and this is just because uh, this is the first video in this series, and I think this is gonna help a lot of people who are like, oh my God, assembly language, I am feeling overwhelmed here. One thing you can do is go to options, go to general, and in the same window pane here, you can click auto comments. And what's gonna happen is Ida is going to fill out all these comments for you that say like, hey, this instruction does this. It moves this into this register. And it's just sort of like narration for you to make things easier for you and to just kind of like explain what's going on. But if you're just getting started, this may be a good way to help yourself get more familiar with assembly language. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. It was an options, general, auto comments, off. So that's it for this video. What we talked about was how to move around in IDA. Uh, we can double click, we can drag the graph, we can view the whole graph using the W key, we can zoom back in using the 1 key, we can jump to a memory address using the G, or we can view cross-references to a function by highlighting that function, pressing Control and X. Um, these are just some ways to move around. There's actually a lot more, um, but that should get you uh, fairly comfortable. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start talking about how to just kind of like approach general reverse engineering stuff when things go our way. And we're just going to walk through a simple program and get a little more comfortable with IDA. Okay, so see you next time. Keep rocking in the free world. Peace out.